Hi everyone, it's been a while. Um, I spent the last year or so focusing heavily on automation, but I am back on track to start studying again for my service routing architect from Nokia. Um, the next exam up in line is the VPLS exam. And in this video, I wanna go over pseudo wire redundancy configurations for layer two or layer three services. So here's our topology. We're gonna to have one core router here, SR12 and SR13 here at the bottom. And then they are going to be connected to SR14, which is actually our PE router handing off to our CE router here at the customer site. Uh, we've got some out of band links here. Um, and we're just gonna pretend like this is gonna be our primary link here, a uh, connection between SR12 and SR14. We're gonna uh, imagine this is a 10 gig link and one gig link here as a standby pseudo wire. And this is kind of a very simple scenario, but uh, if you, this is a situation in which you could use a pseudo wire rather than see. Uh, there's a couple of be different benefits to using something like this. Uh, you don't have to deal with spanning tree for one. Um, the, the traffic disruption is super minimal. Um, if there's any access link failures or node failures, control plane failures. Um, it's redundant loop free paths to basically create the interconnect in layer two and layer three services. So including IES services, which is what we're gonna be doing today. Um, so let's just go ahead and get started. Uh, this, this connection between the SR14 PE router and the CE router is already established. It's configured as a dot one Q circuit um, or connection, I should say. So first things first, let's just get into these boxes actually. So here's SR12 and then here's SR13, here's SR14 and then here is the CE device. Okay, got a Cisco router here at the customer site. Um, so if we were gonna deploy a service for um, in our network here, let's say a, a new service was ordered, it's gonna be a layer three service. We wanna use pseudo wire redundancy. Uh, and in the core here, we wanna save IP space, which is also another awesome thing about using pseudo wire redundancy. Instead of using VRP or something like HSRP, we can use the pseudo wire redundancy um, and actually save IP space. We can still configure a slash 31, but in fact, we're gonna have two routers which are able to uh, respond. In case of a failure, the uh, secondary will take over and be active. So this is actually pretty neat in a service provider world. This this means everything because using a slash thirty one as a thirty instead of a thirty, uh, when you're talking thousands of customers, it makes a big impact. So let's get into these boxes. Let's configure our service. We'll start with SR fourteen, which is the service handing off to the customer. Um, we'll create a VPLS service. So 500. We'll just call it VPL scaling. That's just kind of um, the name of the general general next SRA exam. So we'll give it that um, one VPL scaling. Great. And you see here, there's really nothing in the service yet, obviously. So. Uh, first things first, for creating a, a spoke redundancy, we gotta create an endpoint. So we'll just name it pseudo wire, pseudo wire redundancy. Okay, now you do get some options in here. Let me minimize this, kind of hard to see. Um, Auto learn Mac. Block on mesh, description, ignore standby, Mac pinning, Mac's name, Mac address, endpoint. So 
We'll do revert time 10, just 10 seconds. If it comes up, I get it fail over to primary. Um, and note here, this no means that this is the current um, configuration. So we'll say suppress standby signaling, which is a pretty important. Um, this makes it so the secondary will not respond and actually the pseudo wire will be down. So therefore your layer three interface will not be up. Um, so, oops. Sure. So, don't suppress it. Yeah, you see how this is a little confusing here. So, no suppress, standby. Okay. So, now we can create our pseudo bar spokes. So, I already have some SDPs built to these two core routers, so 10, 10, 10, 2, and 3. Um, these are MPLS SDPs, so now we create some spoke pseudo wires. Um, so, just say spoke, and we'll go to, we'll start with 2, and our service ID, 500, and we'll actually assign it to an endpoint. Just pseudo wire run the C, and then for since two is going to be our 10 gig link, uh, simulated 10 gig link, um, we'll go ahead and say this as the precedence of the primary. Oops. Primary. Can't spell. So I create it first. Okay. So now you can see we have one spoke SDP within our endpoint pseudo wire redundancy. So let's add this uh, secondary spoke SDP. So we'll just say spoke SDP three service ID five hundred and add it to our endpoint. Eight. Um, here you, you could add some more options or precedence um, or value. Instead of primary, you can say precedence. I think the default is four, so here you could just say two or whatever. If you have multiple, I think you can have up to eight different, I'm sorry, four different uh, SDPs. So at the moment, we've got two SDPs within one endpoint that will submit not suppress the standby signaling. So let's go ahead. Oh, one one other thing we need to have on this particular box is the link going to our router, our CE router. So there is a port 115 already configured as a dot one q service or dot one q circuit. So uh, we'll go ahead and add another SAP. So let's we'll say make it easy. Oh. oh yeah, okay. Uh, so these are using the connected breakout port configuration. So one one C five one. Okay, there we go. So this is gonna be a dot one Q with the five hundred VLAN. So on our Cisco router Let's go ahead and just create a couple things here. So we have gig interface 00 as the connection going to our PE device. So we'll go ahead and create a dot one q 500 VLAN interface on that. 500. Well, well, this this should be our uplink. For, you know, this is a customer site, so let's say uplink. Um, then we'll give it an IP address. So we'll just go with something simple. And 
in fact, say slash 31 for point-to-point -point interface. Again, back to the point I made earlier, we're going to be using pseudo wire redundancy, but still take advantage of a slash 31. Uh, I'm using Alcatel commands here, so let's take a look at our interface. It is up, it's configured, VLAN 500. So let's now shut down this VPLS. Nothing yet. Okay, so we do have this configured, so there is no um, interface configured on the two core routers, which are going to be our two endpoints points. So let's configure some services on here. So configure service, IES, 500, single line, name, um, let's call it CE1500. Okay. Um, and we'll create an interface, interface, CE1. Let's keep it simple. Do an IP here, address 100.0.31. And let's make a spoke. So here, this is the the awesome thing about you doing spokes and building them into layer three services and, and inter intertwining them into a layer two service. Um, so spoke SDP to four five hundred create and so let's go back. So we'll mesh out this. Um, and then one other thing to be careful with is your MTU and I actually missed that. So let's go ahead and PMTU 1500 for standard layer three interface. So show service ID. Let's see what we got going on here. So it's already up and up. Um, so I need to show router interface. CE1 500. The interface is up. I should theoretically be able to ping this. So, yep. So it's already responding. So we already have a layer three interface on our core router, uh, taking advantage of this uh, pseudo wire going straight into a layer two service, which is encapsulating a VLAN 500 connection to the CE router, and using a slash 31. So now, since we are working on pseudo wire redundancy, let's go ahead and create the redundancy from router SAR 13. So we'll basically duplicate what's in uh, SR12. So configure service IES 500, SAR1, name CE1, create. We'll create an interface within our service. We'll give it the same address since only one will be up at any given time. And these routers don't really know of each other, don't care. Uh, this could potentially have a routing loop if they're both up at the same time. Obviously, that's not the behavior that we're looking for. Um, so here, address, and then we'll create a spoke. So this is really the only difference here from the configuration on SR12 and SR. R13 is the spoke is different. Um, obviously, we want to use the appropriate pseudo wire within this service. And IP MTU 1500. Nice shot. So it is currently down. And that is the expected behavior. So let's get back into this guy. We'll give that a minute. So, what we can do to test. Ping. Oops. Two one six eight one hundred zero. Repeat. Just give it a thousand. Okay. So our primary is going to spoke two, which 
This is router 10, 10, 10, 2. It's up here. 10, 10, 10, 2. So we'll, we'll go ahead and do a test and <clears throat> simulate a link failure. Uh, we'll just shut down the port. Uh, or we'll, we'll just shut down the, the interface um, on router SR12, and we should see that move over to IE, uh, I'm sorry, to uh, SR13. So we'll just go ahead and start a ping here. So here is our ping. Oops. And since we're in the service, we'll just shut down the service. So we should see some drops here. And it is immediately back up on the other side. All right, so it just fell over to CE1500 interface on SR14. I'm sorry, 13. And we are still up and running. Our production site is still active. The simulated link failure um, has been delegated and we are now running on our backup pseudowire. Uh, we don't have to deal with any STP in the middle for a layer two circuit. Um, we're not worried about anything else. Uh, this just kicked over immediately and we don't have to configure any wacky VRP or HSRP. Um, the, the other thing about this is you could add some BFD to make these, these switchovers even faster. So it was a quick video on just how to set up pseudowire redundancy. I hope to continue doing a few more on VPLS services as I continue to study for the SRA and uh, hopefully you guys find these useful. So thanks.